Hilton Head is 12 by 5 miles, Barrier Island, um, Atlantic Ocean on one side, Intracoastal Waterway on the other. The island, you know, is heavily reliant on tourism. So we see about two and a half million visitors a year on Hilton Head. Uh, at any given time during the season, you might have 180,000 to quarter million people on the island. So the population fluctuates, and then our services fluctuate, our demand fluctuates a lot based on that. Being on the coast and, and uh, being on an island, er everything's sand here. There, we don't have any clay or anything, so we run into all kinds of problems with the sand and with the, the high water tables, especially during the spring and the fall uh, with the uh, high tides and stuff we have here, storms. We have, we have on the mainland, we have the University of South Carolina, Beaufort. Their uh, biology department uh, chair lives here on the island, did a white paper not too long ago where he looked at the soil types and really concluded that we just don't have good soil types for septic. The island really has, especially in the last you know, 10 years and, and picking up even more in the past five years, made a real commitment to say we want to try to eliminate septic usage. Uh, so we've used all-terrain sewer. We've used that to go into a lot of existing neighborhoods. Um, less disruptive way of serving already built environments. We picked some communities that were already existing at that time. They were having septic problems, especially when we had a lot of rain during storms and stuff like that, and provide them sewer without coming in there and disrupting their whole community, tearing up the roads. You know, we went in with an uh, all-terrain sewer system. Now they don't have any issues with their uh, septic, you know, flooding out of their yards. You got to worry about your kids playing out there, everything, you know, it's a turnkey. You know, if there's an issue, they call us and we deal with it. They don't have to deal with it, which we have very little issues. Thank, thank you for that. I think one of the key things we've kind of found is that there's a difference and, and residents start to see it in something like a hurricane where there's a difference between a wastewater disposal system that each individual homeowner is responsible for, a septic system, versus the public sanitary sewer system. We have about 130 pump stations, uh, I, I call them larger pump stations, and then we have probably three to 400 um, all-terrain pump stations that are at individual homes. When we did our initial study on the all-terrain sewer, um, we actually looked at different pump manufacturers, E1 being one of them, and it's not that we didn't like them, but at that time, we chose the uh, centrifugal pumps. Uh, the issues we had with them pumps, one was uh, they had a level indicator that was separate from the pump that wasn't built in there, and they failed miserably. We went through hundreds of them, and they were, they were not, they were very expensive, you know, four or five hundred bucks a piece, and we, we literally went through five, six hundred of them uh, level indicators. And then also, just the pumps itself, you know, we were replacing them quite a bit. They were, we were having a lot of issues with the pumps failing. When we had to replace a pump, it cost as much as buying a whole new pump station, too. So that we had that at cost, which it wasn't figured in at the time of it. So this went on for a few, quite a few years, and then I was introduced to a guy from Covalent, Mr. Bob Jordan. He came down and was kind of pushing, you know, for us to try it, and he he got us to try one at one place. We were replacing this pump monthly. And we tried the one of the E1 pumps, and knock on wood, to this day we've obviously we've never had to go back there and replace it again. So we've never had any issues there. So, and we were replacing it. We probably replaced it four or five times. Our sales staff, our support group, our service people, always think about this system first when we're talking to the, to the owners, when we're talking to the operators, when we're talking to the engineers. It's primarily about the all-terrain sewer system, the piping materials the valving materials, the installation techniques, the connections to the grinder pumps, all the way up to the connection from the grinder pump to the house and from the grinder pump to the house electrical. The, the focus of that with the sewer system is the longevity that we're looking for in owning and operating an all-terrain sewer. So I finally talked with my manager and said, you know, I, I know these are a little more, but what we're putting in cost for labor and our guys' times, and then with the cost of the level indicator, the cost of the replacement pumps, I think it's gonna work out, you know, save us money in the long run. So they, we decided to try it and it's worked out really well. That's why when we have a, one of our older pumps go down, we now retrofit that to an E1 pump. And 
all the new pumps we're putting in now are all, all E1 pumps.